everyone. We are here for the October 4th, 2021 Audit Committee meeting. We haven't met uh, in a while, I think since June 7th. Um, so we have a fair amount to cover. Um, I'm going to skip item number one for now um, so that we can get right to the audit presentation by the Bonadio group. And the floor is yours. And just for the board members. These microphones aren't ones that pick up all around you, so you, in order for us to be able to be as well, right you do need to pull them a little bit closer to you. I don't think mine is on. No, it's on. Is it? Yep. It's yeah. on. You just have to be close to it. No? Nope. I did hear something. Last time I did this, I scared the crap out of them. Especially <laughs> Mark, who was. I know. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think it goes on. All right, sorry, Kylie, go ahead. All righty. Uh, hello, my name is Kylie Fitzek, and I am an external auditor with the Bonadio Group and was the manager here up at the Board of School District uh, um, for the engagement that we had here. And we recently completed the audit and here to go over the reports in detail with all of you and answer any questions that any of you may have. So I did provide each of you three deliverables. Uh, the first is your financial statements you should have. The second is your audit of the extra classroom financial statements. And then the third is the required communications letter. Please feel free to stop me along the way with any, any questions that you may have. So first, I'm going to start out with the required communications letter. Do you want to take a peek at that with me? A few things to note. So during fiscal year 2021, the school district adopted the Governmental Accounting Standards Board's GASB statement number 84 for fiduciary activities. And this essentially eliminated the trust and agency funds as well as the private purpose funds and moved those extracurricular monies and scholarship monies into a miscellaneous special revenue fund, which is a governmental fund. In the financial statements, you will see a change in accounting principle restatement mentioned, mentioned and that is what we are referring to. There were no transactions for which there was a lack of authority of guidance or consensus that all significant transactions have been recognized in the proper period. The most sensitive accounting estimates reported in the financial statements were the depreciable lives of capital assets, the other post-employment benefits liability, compensated absences, and then the net pension liability and the related deferred outflows and inflows of resources. And then just to mention that these estimates apply to the government wide statements only. Here in the letter as well, it mentions that our role as auditors is to evaluate the estimates and all estimates were evaluated and were considered reasonable. There were no significant difficulties in performing the audit or dealing with management. During our audit of the financial statement, there were no material audit adjustments required. There was one past audit adjustment, which is an attached attachment A behind this letter. And this was for the compensated absences booked in the general funds, which by definition does not fit a current liability. There were no disagreements with management. We are not aware that management consulted with other accountants. Our discussions with management were in the normal course of our professional relationship and our responses were not a condition of our retention. So that is that's it for the required communication letter. And now we'll move on to the school district financial statement. Is there any questions to ask regarding the required communications letter? So looking at the table of contents, you'll see that there are six sections, the independent auditor's report, the management's discussion and analysis, the financial statements, required supplementary information, other information, and then the required report under government auditing standards. So now looking at page one of the district's overall financial statements, this is the independent auditor's report. Looking at the management's responsibility paragraph, management is responsible for the preparation, 
and fair presentation of these financial statements in accordance with accounting principles generally accepted in the United States of America. Next, the auditor's responsibility. Our responsibility is to express opinions on these financial statements based upon our audit. And then the audit involves performing procedures to obtain audit evidence about the amounts and disclosures in the financial statements. We did perform transactional testing over your internal controls, as well as transactional testing on substantively, so that's over your accounts receivable, accounts payable, the cash, the debt, et cetera. And in conclusion for that, we are issuing an unmodified opinion that the financial statements are presented fairly in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles, and that is upon board acceptance. And just to note, this is the highest level of assurance that the auditors can provide you. And then just something different to note here in the independent auditor's report, page two, we added in the emphasis of matter paragraph to note there. That's the change in accounting principle that I mentioned a few moments ago. And I'll come up on later in the statement that it's discussed in detail in footnote 13 of the statement and that discloses in detail about the gas fee for that all school districts were required to implement. From next, pages 4 through 13, that's your management discussion and analysis. I'm not going to talk about this section, but if you don't have time to read the full 63-page report, um, the MDNA is a good piece to read and to take a look at the, financial state, the key financial statement highlights. Rating. So now on to the financial statement highlights. Um, so as an overview of your of your financial statements, there are two sets: your school district wide statements and then your fund level statements. Um, so so they both present entirely two different pictures. The school district wide financial statements are on the full accrual basis, and then the fund level statements are presented um, or a modified accrual. So now getting into the numbers, page 14, the statement of net position. You'll see all the way there at the bottom, the total net position as of June 30th, 2021, the deficit of $53.8 million, and that's $8.9 million less at, as of year end, as of 2021 compared to June 30th, 2020. Um, this is in due to part of the effects of the other post-employment benefits. Um, you know, if you look upwards, you'll see that other post-employment benefits, there's a large liability on the books for about $106 million. So, can you get into what that is and what that represents? Yes. So we I don't even have $106 million yep, it, in our budget. <laughs> it, it, it's standard for all school districts that they you're required to um, report on the books the, uh, to future obligations. I do want to point out before I get into that, there are several pages to give in your leisurely time if you want to take a read through about the other post-employment benefits. It starts on, it's footnote 10, and it begins on page 42. 42 through 44. So that provides you three, three pages of significant details um, providing the OPEP for all employees who meet New York State TRS and New York State ERS eligibility requirements. Um, so, you know, as you can, it states the specifics, you know, for for Boreasville School District, how teachers and administrators age 55 with five years of service who are eligible to retire and collect benefits, um, you know, so eligible for retiree health care benefits for life from the school district. Um, and then it, you can read further. So basically, we rely on the actuary. We got a, it's called the GASB 75 report. We rely on the actuary who uses all the data, all the census data that, you know, your business office sends the census data on over to the actuary. And then they're using the birth dates, the retiree dates, the hire dates, your, your gender, and they compile all that data and they project outwards to what your, it, it's a large estimate on your books. That's not a 
solid number on your books. Um, so using all of that data is what projects them outwards to get to that 106 million, 106 million dollars. So just one mention, this is liability over 30 years. Yeah, right. Yeah, it's so, a projection. <laughs> <laughs> we need 30. to say that. Yeah, yeah. that's a key exactly. point to mention. Yeah, so it's a projection over the next 30 years of the cost that it's going to take to, to provide post-retirement benefits to our to the district. Yeah, the right, yeah. Based on our current contracts, too. So if anything right. changes there, that may raise it or lower it. So. Yeah, Can I ask you a question about the uh, presentation? Sure. Is it, <laughs> is it normal to just give the <coughs> year that you're auditing, or would you oftentimes give the prior year for comparison purposes. So that all comes down to the display and presentation of the numbers. It's standard for audit auditing presentation to provide one year's worth. Mm -hmm. um, I can say there are a few school districts who reach out to us who do want comparative statements. Yeah. Um, but I'd say probably 90% of the schools that we audit, they, they choose to do just the one year. And then usually in our presentations, well, like I'm doing mentioning the comparative, what, what the amounts were in prior year and compared to this year. So you just said that this particular liability is less than what it was a year ago. And so knowing those variances between this year and last year would be helpful. I think. Correct. But I, I do want to correct you on that. When I mentioned what was less, the overall total net position as of year ends, 53.79 million I mentioned okay. is $8.9 million less than prior year. The OCAP liability I have here in my notes actually increased eleven and a half million dollars for so, prior year. So we have less of a position. We have a, a higher negative position. Yeah. That's that's I think where the confusion is coming from. So. So the one hundred and six was higher than last year. That is correct. Yep. Okay. I, I misread that. Okay. Yep. And on um, page. 43 if you flip there you'll see what it was 94.7 million dollars if you kind of look towards the end of that page Got you'll it. see there's the balance at july 1 2020 there's all the various um numbers that play a part in that and in some in assumption changes input changes benefit payments um showing the ins and the outs arriving at the 106 million dollar bottom line as of june 30th 2021. yep any other questions for Steve? No? Okay, so I spoke on the net position. Now let's jump back upwards to talk about your assets and liabilities. Um, so current assets at, as of year end, June 30th, 2021, about $10.8 million. That's $235,000 less at, in 2021 compared to 2020. And when we did our comparative, that was due in part to a, uh, to a decrease in cash. Your capital assets, I'll note here, at year end, $18 million. This was $1.8 million more compared to prior year. Then long-term liabilities account for $109.2 million. And this is $9.9 .9 million compared more compared to prior year. And this, again, is what I just mentioned, the OPEB liability increased $11.5 million. So now we can go to the next page, page 15. And you'll see here, to point out the change in net position, there's the $8.9 million for, for fiscal year 2021. So there was an $8.9 million decrease in the overall net position in comparison to a decrease of $7.2 million in prior year. So those are your government-wide statements, and now we'll move on to the funds level statements. So that's looking at your general fund, your capital projects fund, your school lunch fund, your federal fund, debt service fund, et cetera. Starting with the general fund, so looking at page 16, the general fund balance ended the year with $6.1 million. $4.9 million of restricted fund balance related to your various reserves. $114,000 under, under assigned, which is your encumbrances. And then $1.1 million of unassigned fund balance. As you know, you're limited to retaining 4% um, of the school budget and, and unreserved, unreserved, unappropriated fund balance. 
and you're right under that limit at 3.98%, which we will point out um, on page 58, shows, sorry, not page 58, 55. 55 is where it shows the calculation and you're, and you're right under the 4%. Then for the capital project fund balance, that's showing at year end a deficit of $3.6 million. And the key point to mention to note out there is the band payable on the books for your bond anticipation notes of $5.6 million. That plays a part into that. Then the next column over are your non-major funds, which those non-major funds are your special aid fund, your school lunch fund, your debt service fund, and then the newly fund miscellaneous special revenue fund that I spoke upon earlier, which is your scholarship and your and your scholarship and extracurricular money that got moved over into those funds. Pages 57 and 58 are the two back schedules that go into detail about your school lunch funds, your federal funds, your debt service fund, and your federal funds. And I'll just note some key bottom line highlights for those. School lunch end of the year with a positive fund balance of about $49,000. Your miscellaneous special revenue fund shows there you go, the $167,000, which is the restatement I noted earlier for the for GAS 84, for these extra classroom and scholarship monies. Federal fund balance, $0. And then your debt service fund, $454,000. And then page 58 for each of those funds shows your revenues and your expenses, your changes in fund balance. And to note there, school lunch, school lunch expenses exceeded your revenues by $73,000. Your miscellaneous special revenue, your revenues ex exceeded your expenses by $5,000. And for your federal funds, your revenues and expenses equal out $402,000 to get to your ending balance of fund balance of zero dollars. So those are your back schedules. So now we can flip back to where we were originally at pages 16 and 17, where the general fund, capital fund, and your non-major funds are mentioned there. So page 18, just to point out, the, the general fund I'm gonna go into detail in a few moments when I discuss the budget versus actual for that fund. And then I just wanna point out how the capital projects funds, um, the key point to look at there is the capital outlays. So there was about $3.1 million of capital outlays for the year. Any questions with any of the funds before I move forward? So the, the capital outlays at the end of the year is showing as a negative, but that's not, yes. yep. not a concern. It, it's all due to timing and then that band payable uh, that's showing the reliabilities about anticipation notes. So it's all it's all due to timing and when that will be due. Got it. That, that will change for next year since we did go to permanent financing, so. You know, the ban is not recognized as revenue. Only the bond is recognized as revenue. Next, pages 20 and, 20, 20 and 21. Um, this is different for Gatsby 84. We used to show for fiduciary funds, the trust and agency and private purpose trust fund that I mentioned. Um, now, as you see on 20, page 21, we are required just to show on the books the library taxes. So that shows your tax collections for other governments, your ins and your outs, the addition, deduction, bottom line, um, zero dollars. So that was a new disclosure required for the new GAD fee. Alrighty, so now onto the footnotes of the statements. Pages 22 through 47, I won't go through the detailed notes as they are our standard footnotes, um, but please feel free to read through if you 
one of the, a lot of the pages have to do with pensions and then the OPEB that I mentioned. So all those have been standard year to year. Um, but there is a new footnote that we added and that is on page 46. I mentioned for GASB 84, the change in accounting principle. That's new to this year. It gives you some information on it, footnote 13. And it shows all the tables to arrive at the restatements, restated balance that are moving the funds from the agency, the fiduciary activities over to the miscellaneous special revenue fund. Can you explain what types of funds are captured in the trust and agency and the private purpose trust funds? Yep, so the trust and agency funds um, hold held the extracurricular clubs monies, and then the private purpose trust funds held all the scholarship monies. There may have been um, some other minor items, I remember, depending on each school district that trust and agency can um, sometimes through the years hold monies in there that then a lot of school districts either move to the general funds or um, if they felt that it was for a designated purpose, they would move that to the miscellaneous special revenue fund for that special purpose. But generically speaking, most of the money in the trust and agency um, was for extracurricular activities and then the private purpose trust fund was for the scholarships. Yep. And then an, another a new footnote that we had added on next page 47, the COVID-19 pandemic footnote. Uh, that we've mentioned the allocations to the school districts from the stimulus plan. So that's your CRISA money, the Coronavirus Response and Relief Supplemental Appropriations Act. And then ARPA money, your American Rescue Plan Act money. So for future years, um, the allocation, so for, for your school district, $1.1 million of CRISA money, $282,000 of ARPA money. And then right above that, we note that um, all the CARES Act money, the, the ESSER and the GER money specifically that um, was audited, all of that was entirely spent during, during the year, fiscal year 2021. All right, now moving on to the budget versus actual for the general funds. So pages 49 and 50. So you'll see here, $26 million of actual revenues compared to the $25.7 million of budgeted revenues brings you to your 306, roughly $306,000 more of revenues than budgeted. And what's the source of the overage? Like what categories does it fall into? Pardon me? What, what categories or where is that extra 306,430 coming from? So if you look over into the final budget variance and budgetary actual shows you the various larger differences there. So um, I, perhaps Robin, you, you can speak to I know you mentioned this in your MDNA, the management discussion analysis provided us some highlights to hit upon. Uh, um, under miscellaneous, that 298, 220 of it is the refund from NEHIT. So. From the what? From NEHIT, from the former uh, health group you. that we were involved in. Okay. So the significant portion of that is from there. Got it. Okay. And then we can see the other categories here. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. And then for the expenses, next page, page 50, you'll see looking at the actual column downwards, 26, roughly $26.9 million of actual expenses compared to a $28.2 million of, of budgeted expenses. And then there's $114,000 of encumbrances bringing you to a net favorable result of $1.2 million. You can see in that, in that last column to the right. Um, and then next, next row downwards showing the um, fund balance decreasing by $849,000 due to your, um, your, your total expenses exceeding your total revenues. Any, any questions for that? 
All right, uh, next are your OPEB and pension schedules, your some other post-employment, and then uh, your specifically called the GAP 68 for the ERS and TRS pension schedules, which we will we will skip over those. I do have a question here on, back on 50. Um, so how I'm reading this is our budget was 6.6. .6 and I guess well, what I'm trying to figure out is, did we spend within our budget or did we exceed our budget? We spent within our budget. The reason that that number is significantly higher is the $2.1 million that we transferred to the debt service. So that, Capital oh, reserve, yeah. the capital fund yeah. for the capital project. Okay. And repair reserve monies. Yeah. Of 45000 and something. We're good. We had a good year. We, we had a good year. All right. Yes. That's what yes. I was going to say. I'm looking to hear. The reserves went down, but there was a reason, and it was approved by the taxpayers and the voters. So. Okay. Thank you. And it was. Planned for. Yeah. Exactly. We knew those claims were going to resolve. Exactly. So, okay. Like I said, 51 through 53 are your OPEP and pension schedules. And then page 55, I already hit upon that. That shows your 3.98% being right under the 4%. Page 56 shows your capital projects. Activity for that. Pages 57 and 57 and 58. I already mentioned earlier when I was going through with your non-major non-major fund schedule. And then lastly, it's your uh, your required report under government auditing standards report under the governmental auditing standards report. And this is these two pages capture that um, the report requires to gain an understanding and report on the district's internal controls over financial reporting. We noted no material weaknesses and no significant deficiencies in the financial reporting over those internal controls. And then the second part of your report on page 62 is your compliance with laws and regulations and grant contracts that that non-compliance could lead to a material financial statement impact and we noted no non-compliance non and then the last page noting that there are no financial statement findings i love no fucking <laughs> 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 Anything. You said something about attachment A. Did yeah. You go over that? Yep. So that is your part of the required communications letter. Attachment A is the last page. This is this is discussed with Jim and and, um, and Robin in regards to compensated absences being shown as a current liability on the books. This is not a rise to a material misstatement on the financial statements, but it's a required disclosure that we have to put a part of the report that it was a past audit adjustment, as um, I mentioned, that the compensated absences by definition does not meet uh, a current liability. So it really should be a long-term liability um, on the books at the government-wide level. It was discussed with management, and we are disclosing it uh, in attachment A. And, in this letter. Are these compensated absences that happened at a, a time other than the fiscal year? Yes, yep, it was uh, mentioned in prior year as well. Um, and and we'll see going forward if it's still on the books or not, but we are just required to disclose it as it does not fit the definition of current it, liability. We're always gonna have compensated absences, aren't we? Yes. And, and the question, it, part of the discussion is how much of it is current, how much of it is not. And that's kind of where we're kind of not on the same page here. We could pay out the full 190 during the year. Most likely it's going to be 20, 30,000 instead. So we made an adjustment. It was not material. So we'll, we'll look at that going forward. Okay. Yeah. Any other questions before I jump to our last report? No. 
Okay, lastly, very brief, uh, the extra classroom report. This is the school district annual audit of the extracurricular activities. We are issuing an unmodified opinion on those financial statements, but we do just want to uh, verbally mention that there were some findings found uh, with the extracurricular activities during our testing. Uh, some of those to note were that um, some monthly club reconciliations for some of the some of the extracurricular clubs uh, they could not be obtained for uh, the sample of cash disbursements that we were we were testing, um, as well as some of the receipts. Uh, there were a couple disbursements that um, only had one authorizing signature on the check rather than two, and by policy there should be two uh, signatures on the check. Um, there were uh, several disbursements and receipts that were missing student club treasurer signature approvals. And due to COVID, a new policy that the district put into place was to have email approvals provided instead. And those for our sample that we uh, tested, not all the email approvals were able to be provided to us. And then lastly, um, there was a number of receipts that were um, lacking proper supports and a few that were not deposited timely. So these were communicated um, during our testing with the business office. Um, and, you know, it's just something that we, we, we as an auditing firm do put on extracurricular classroom trainings um, for, you know, the, the, the club advisors, student treasurers at the service we offer um, just to get everybody onto the same page um, just to think about for, for the future. So we had some procedural deficiencies, but Fund for accounting? Yes, all funds were accounted for, all funds were captured, but in terms of this internal controls that we look at for per extra class policies in place, um, not all of those were executed. So I think last year when we talked about this, we talked about the training. You can't see the smile on my face right now because yeah, it's, it's, they all went there, literally, they were all trained. Training. Yeah, that's kind, of, that's kind of where I'm like. Yeah. Kind of smiling underneath my mask a little bit. Is, right. We actually did the training through Bonadio. Everybody signed off on the training yep. and they went through it. And we still, I actually feel like we might have seen more errors <laughs> in this than we did in the previous year. That's yeah. actually what Alan Walther, the partner in our engagement, had actually mentioned to us. He had, um, when we were, you know, in conclusion as an audit team going through everything, he had said, you know, the training was put on. Um, and he, and unfortunately, the results showed that there were more errors. You know, we don't we don't test all of the transactions. Keep in mind, you know, we um, select a sample of receipts and a sample of disbursements. So it's the luck of the draw, right? We don't we don't pinpoint and selectively pick ones. You know, we have a whole random generator through our audit software. So it was the luck of the draw that this time the sample, the, the probability of there being errors that ended up being higher um, than in the past, which was something that the partner on engagement did note. So he said, you know, of course, we're always welcome. There are schools that we do an annual training. We come in every year, you know, and um, just We recorded to, the training and actually I've had staff members signing on to the training this past month as part of retraining. So I find they just, I find it kind of funny that it's, we're doing more training than we have and still seeing more errors. <laughs> in my role as the bad guy, I'll probably have to bring people in. I would think that's probably going to be it. You're, you're being very kind. <laughs> yeah. But so, extracurricular audits, I think, in every school, yeah. oh, oh, hands oh, down, yes. is always the place that you have yeah. to address and look at. Yeah, that's where the. The that's good thing the, is, no errors with ours. Exactly. That's, 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 <laughs> let's make that clear. Yeah, let's make that very clear. Yeah. So then it's bottom line to note dollars, you know, the fund balance shows 100, roughly of $111,000 as of June 30th, 2021 of, um, of cash, and then compared to the prior year of $110,000. Um, so that's it I have. I, I'd like to thank Robin in the business office for all of your assistance during the audit. It was, um, you, you're always, you're a joy to work with, and you always are timely, and giving us prompt responses to all of our many questions that we were many, many, many questions many this year questions. through the portal through the <laughs> and on site. So we are very appreciative for, for all your you. help. And I appreciate your hard work. Yeah. It's been a, a challenge. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> we hear that a lot. Yeah. You got through it, right? <laughs> Well, COVID Thank has you. changed everything, everything in some way. Between COVID and then, of course, Gatsby having to implement well, news, you know, you hear that from all the schools, that it's like they always need to change things up to 
keep their jobs, right? They have to implement new standards for, for schools to abide by. So that, well, that was, was a doozy. That was 84. Was some schools say that they thought um, the implementation of GATSB 84 was tougher than COVID. So, you know, <laughs> to, put, to put that into perspective. Mm -hmm. I'd have to think, think about think. that, but yeah. you make it right. Yeah. <laughs> I agonized over that. Yeah, it was, yeah. It's an agonizing GATSB, that was for sure. All right. Any final questions from any members of the board? No. Well, thank you for a very thorough presentation. Um, I appreciated the walkthrough. We, last year, we didn't get as detailed a walkthrough. So um, I think it was informative. And thank you for answering our questions. Thank you for having okay. me. And then for the board meeting, I'll be, it'll just be a high level, very brief. You know, I won't be going into the details. It's just sure. overall, my modified opinion and well, no material weaknesses, significant deficiencies, anything, you know, the highlights that you want to hear. Uh, unless the board feels differently, no, I don't think report. she really needs okay. to stick okay. around. Okay. I mean, yeah. okay. This yeah. is a committee of the board. Detail. Yeah, yeah, this is so. a committee of the board, 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 so board, this yeah. was where detail is supposed to be. And, okay. Yeah, the, the oh, okay. full board. Yeah, yeah, I know the capital discussion we had this afternoon, were there a journal entry to be made? So I wouldn't necessarily, so bottom line of capital assets of the $18 million, that's going to remain as is. But when, when Alan and myself were looking through just final numbers or final review of all, of all the reports, it was noted how the construction in progress has not, there were additions to it, but, but nothing that came out of it to be reclassed and to say, you know, um, the buildings or or machinery and equipment, you know, any of those buckets. So it was noted that, well, is there truly five million dollars of active projects going on right now um, for the construction of progress, or should some of those monies be reclassed out of um, construction and progress and into mm -hmm. to become active, you know, whether that's into your buildings or your um, right. machinery and equipment. So um, I did see that you emailed us the um, right. your final cost right. report, which would take that much out. Uh, right, and our, one of our audit staff was true, so was looking into that as well. We were going to reach out to you in the, in the morning about okay. that. So, yeah. just because we wanted Alan to take another look at it too, since the question stems from him. And and June 30th never ends. Yeah, it never does. It never ends. The never ending goes on and on and on. I hear you. <laughs> so, is that a, a current audit, a current period issue? you're talking about or is that so there'll be bottom line overall um Request. fixed assets will not change but it's still going to remain at 18 million dollars it's just a matter of is there going to be money that gets reclassed out of construction and progress into a active fixed assets bucket okay so bottom line stays the same nothing will change with the reports number wise okay anybody else all right thank you very much thank you so much for having thank me have a good you. night you too Thanks, Kevin. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Next year, but I won't. I know. <laughs> we got six more months of that, Jim. I know. Sorry. Don't forget that. We'll be in touch tomorrow, Robin. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. You too. Okay, great. All right. So why don't we move on to item number one, which was the review of the minutes for our June 7th meeting. The minutes were circulated with the um, materials for this meeting. Anyone have any um, questions or comments on the minutes? Okay, great. Um, no correction. Thank you, Robin, for preparing those. Oh, you're most welcome. All right, and then item number three is also yours, Robin. Yes, and um, rather than actually going over May and June, I think it would be more important to look at the year-end balances, which was the page that looked like this. Uh, I think it's titled ST3 Final, June 30th, 21. That is, was it one of the tabs on the yes. spreadsheet? Yes. The actual June 21 ST3 balance? Yes. Because that will give you the comparison between June 30th of 2020 and June 30th of 2021, first column and fourth column. And as you can see, last year, 1920 was fairly normal through the end of March. We had fairly normal revenues, fairly normal expenditures, and then everything got shut down. 2021 was completely abnormal. Um, there was very little revenue other than reimbursables, but the reimbursables were very high, very good. Um, 
Comparatively, I think the most important number to look at between the two years is the interfund revenue. We had to cover $77,000 in 1920 to get us back to um, opening and closing balance being the same. For the entire year of 2021, the general fund only subsidized 73,000. I think that's amazing. I and think that- thought, The last time we talked about this, we thought it was gonna be somewhere around 90. Yep, so, yep. Um, we did better than we thought we were going to. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, claims were, I should have brought it up. Actually, you have that on the June. Actual June? Yeah, uh, actual June 2021. Mm -hmm. At the bottom, you would have the claims, and I don't have them. Oh, maybe I do. Maybe I do. Yes, yeah. And then actual June 2020. Uh, it should be the June 30th, 2021 monthly, not not the uh, SC3, just the June 2021 June tab. 2021. Yep. Okay, I have it on. Last page of that P&L should show you the, lunch yeah, tab. the claims. Looks like this. I think I'm looking at the wrong one. I have my glasses. I can see. Okay, I'm going to go to the reviewing. There's all this. Oh, this is what I have. Is that a handbook? Oh, here we go. Last page. We'll show you what this is at. Looks like that. Okay, here down at the bottom. Yep. Last year to this year, and then year to date, last year to this year. You've got June in the first two columns, and full year in the last column. Okay. All right. So the year to date actual through June 30th, 2020. Do you want me to go over it, Robin? Well, only if you want to. I just wanted to show you comparatively that. Type A lunches in June of 20 were 1,252. Um, an actual for June of 2021 was 7,212. Right. Because Paul was pushing out, well, how did they, it was any child that was in school? Correct, yes. Yeah. And and every child qualified. <laughs> and they still do for this year, which yep. is going to help us this year. Absolutely. Right. So if you look over to the last two columns, through June 2020 was 48, almost 4,900, but for 2021, it was almost 70,000. So that's where the revenue came from in 2021 mm -hmm. was through the sale of reimbursable lunches. Right, exactly. Okay. Any questions? No, so this year we're looking better. Well, hopefully so. Um, I'll have a comparison next audit committee for july through hopefully october we'll see how mm -hmm. quick paul gets me the numbers back okay. i'll give you my anecdote based off of what we see like on a daily basis a large amount of our kids are buying breakfast and lunch mm -hmm. um and all of well buying i mean we're getting refunded because it's free reimbursables yes. yep so we're seeing a large amount of those kids going through the lines um Paul's also got the sub sandwich going on. So those kids are buying there. And we also have our coffee bar. We have snacks going on at our elementary school now. So I don't foresee, I mean, from what I can tell just anecdotally, it looks like we're going to be in a solid place. And everybody's passing every day. What's that? And everyone's here every yeah. day. Everyone's Patterson. here. Yeah, I mean, exactly. the coffee, every the coffee is flowing and the kids are happy. The coffee sure is flowing. <laughs> <laughs> Not all of that. No, the coffee's not free, the snacks aren't free. And that Java Hut was a big money. Maker. That is, the right, Java right? Hut is it a very good last year. So. The Java Hut's a big money. It maker. was every third day. Yeah. yeah, it was every third day. And well, so are snacks. Though. It was every day, but kids were here every third day. Yeah. Oh. But snacks are also very, like, fruit roll ups and, you know, all those different <laughs> treats. Those are, I mean, they're killer. Water, <laughs> seltzer. Yep. I mean, that stuff is not free. And those are the things that kids are buying in droves. Mm -hmm. 
you know, so yep. that is happening. Here you know? it's my Oh, yeah, <laughs> really? Here, I remember. Oh, Listen, my. I'm one of them. They just go, Where is yeah, this money going? It goes. So, Frank, can you talk about free breakfast? Because I don't know that everybody realizes that like kids can get breakfast. Yep. I know we talked about it last year. So, last year, we were actually putting bags out for right. kids in the morning when they came, so they were literally take one, and the kids were just taking them. But there's free breakfast every morning, and the kids go and they, they grab it. And, at you know, both school, at both how, school. how does that work at the only, yeah, the only I believe school. it's at the elementary as well. Yeah. They, yes, they were at both schools. It's, yep. it's so are kids there early enough coming off the bus that they can get a breakfast? Or I know at one point, what, not not sure. Sure. I'd have to look. I don't know the point. At, at one point, time. way back when, we actually had a discussion about moving up the. And, and is it now the drop off time, or they have to wait outside the school? At one point in time, we talked about moving up the, the intake drop-off time at the elementary school from 8.30 to 8.20 we don't to allow staff. kids to be able to purchase. Yeah, we, don't have, we don't have the staffing to do Just, that. No, I know we don't. That, 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 we had that conversation all around driving breakfast yeah. purchase numbers. i got to find out. I don't Honestly, I, I can't speak to what's going on at the elementary school because I'm not there enough to understand it. In the morning. would also run into the transportation. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Huge transportation. No, this was an, uh, the option for parents who drop off, drop their kids off. Well, we'll ask Paul to break us down. But also for like the middle, I remember for the high school, you had like a cart out and yeah. the kids could mm -hmm. come in. Is that the same for the middle school? Well, the middle school are funneled down that way in the morning. What about if you <clears> drop <throat> off? Because a lot of people are dropping off now at the side. They're still like... funneled down this way in the morning. Okay. Yeah, the kids all funnel down this way. So they go in, they get their food, they go to the cafeteria or the um, gymnasium. Right, but what if they don't make it past it? How do they know? Right. Most of the kids are all funneled this way in the morning. I see them all funneling. The teachers are pushing them this way. Okay. So if they're not, like, it's a smaller amount of students because the I'm majority just of the kids like, are like your middle school school or two. Like, yeah. I drop mine. When they get off the, the bus, door. she go. Oh, if you drop off. And, yeah. So when she gets off the bus, when she takes the bus, I know that they go down to the cops. They funnel. And they get and they get stuck. And the teachers are funneling from, from where you drop them off. They're funneling down to the cafeteria. They're supposed to. The kids might not hide at their lockers. You know, but you know they're directed to that area every morning. Yeah, okay. no, she told me like we have to go to the commons when yeah. we get off the bus. Ooh, all right. Why do parents do two drop offs then? Huh? <laughs> oh, that's yeah. a treat. I'll, I'll tell you about. Yeah, this. why don't they just drop off <laughs> down at the high school and alleviate that whole? Well, that's my commanding number. Yeah, it is. And um, you also have to remember. I want to. I always want to say something. You may see that as a good idea, but when you have a parent saying, "My sixth grader is now walking around tenth graders hearing yeah, the swear yeah. words that go on," yeah. that is, you know, it changes the whole dynamic of everything that's there. Yeah, sorry. that was good. <laughs> All right. Sorry. I, I'm sorry. I agreed with you. Right? All right. So, so in terms of sports, lunch, profit, and loss, we're in good shape right now. We'll continue to monitor. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, Absolutely. great. Thanks, Robin. Um, the fourth item we have is um, the claims auditor reports. So those were circulated. Francine um, couldn't be here tonight. Um, you know, when I'm going through them, uh, you know, I tend to be a little bothered by the exceptions, but then I, I try and take a step back and look at, you know, the total number of exceptions relative to the total amount of awards. And I think for last year it was 21 hundredths of a percent um, exceptions, right? So, pretty good. <laughs> so I, I, like I said, I see the numbers and I, you know, say to myself, hmm, I wonder how we have all these things happening. But um, in the grand scheme of things, I think we're doing pretty well. Um, and Francine lets nothing go. No, no I, can tell. <laughs> I can tell that she's very thorough. She's, she's good. She's really good, right? Yeah. And it looks like several of them are like emergency requests yeah, so you right. have no right. i mean emergency you can't just say wait till i get this approved right exactly yeah exactly. <laughs> unless you're in a meeting and jim goes just wait wait like wait until i get the po changed because <laughs> 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 that happened today it's 2 30. <laughs> all right unless anyone has anything else i think we're We've covered our agenda for today. Our next meeting is on the calendar for December 6th. And I think we'll keep that date unless something comes up. Yeah. All right. Thank you very much. That concludes our meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. First? No, we're not going to do it. There's no reason to do it. There's no reason to do it. No. All right. The executive, right? There's no, no reason for it. Next week or next month.
It was just we were ahead. Yeah, we it's, had it's, extra yeah, time. It wasn't we gonna. It's a um, yeah. just a routine matter that can wait till. I'm going to.